Hi, I'm Susie Fabricius, and I'm Vice President of Marketing and Sales at Russell Moccasin Company in Berlin, Wisconsin. The W.C. Russell Moccasin Company was started in 1898 by a man by the name of Will Russell. My grandfather started working for Will Russell. Will Russell sold the company to the Bass Brothers, and my grandfather, Bill Gustin, turned around and bought the company from them in 1929. Hi, I'm Joe Gagno. Vice President of Operations of Russell Moccasin Company in Berlin, Wisconsin. Russell Moccasin was first originally located on Market Square in downtown Berlin. What it was was a two-story building because there was also they also made what they called Russell gloves, which were hand sewn gloves at that time back in the early days. And then the one floor was the hand sewn table cut gloves, and the other floor was all the shoes. Uh, it, and it kind of at that time it was ahead of its time because they had a bowling alley in the basement for the employees back then. In about 1950 when uh, they moved here where we're currently located on Franklin Street. The guys that went and fought uh, in World War II from Berlin, they'd write home and have a pair of Imperials sent in black leather over there because they hated the, the Army boots at that time. So we made a lot of boots for servicemen during the World War II that were over there. Once you walk in the door, it's like stepping back into time. You'll see numerous machines that are over 100 years old. People that work for us have worked for us for many years. When they are crafting a boot or a shoe, they put their individual imprint on that boot. Everything is handcrafted and made to fit your foot. It's basically a shoemaker's piece of artwork. We pull everything up from the bottom where a lot of shoe companies put it, pull and pull everything underneath. We pull everything up from the bottom because it's a, a true moccasin construction. We have three layers for our, the hunting people. We have boots for bird hunting that have three layers of waterproof leather wrapped around your foot with a, a number of different soles depending how aggressive or non-aggressive you want to be. But when we speak of moccasin construction, it's a true moccasin that your foot's wrapped in it, but you still have the ability to make a boot that you can climb mountains with, or you can go on safari, you can chase pheasants with. It's, it's that sturdy of a boot. It's the ability to keep that foot naturally shaped and still have that moccasin control, but still have the soles underneath it. There's three different types of moccasin construction. There's single vamp, double vamp, and triple vamp. So this piece right here is called a vamp. So if somebody were to get a single vamp boot, it would just be one layer of leather that's underneath your feet. So the sole would be right under here? Yes, correct. Uh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, gotcha. This piece right here is called an inner vamp, and it's impregnated with silicone, and it actually makes the boot more waterproof, and it also gives you more support. So this piece gets glued inside here, and then it gets stitched on the top. It completely leather lines the whole footbed of the boot. So when you slip the boot on, your foot goes into the, this little booty. And then this piece right here is called a molded sole. And this goes on, which would make it a third layer, which would make it a triple vamp. So it gives you one, two, three layers of leather underneath your feet and it makes it the most waterproof that a leather boot can be. And if you were to cut off the toe of the boot when it's done, this is what it looks like on the inside. So you can see that there's three layers of leather on the inside. We've always been a hunting boot, but ours are all leather, meaning that we don't use a man-made material around your foot. We still believe that the leather breathes better, and so we you have, you have the different layers, the different choices of leather. We make oxfords, we make dress shoes, uh, penny loafers uh, made them out of alligator or ostrich, or just standard uh, chamois leather is a great shoe. Harrison Ford, he loves the one oxford that we make. We made several pair for him. At Russell Moccasin, we use many different types of leather. We get our leather from basically three main places in the United States here. A lot of the leather that we use is very waterproof, soft and flexible. They're gonna last you a long time. 
very easy to take care of. They actually get better the more you wear them. And over time, people have sent their boots into us that have been, you know, 15, 20, 25 years old, 30, and they're still going strong. We also have exotics, ostrich and alligator. We also have a service where people can send in their game hides that, that have already been tanned, and we can make any boot or shoe out of your game hide. The custom fitting of a Russell Moccasin uh, boot or shoe is, is very easily done. It can be done in a number of ways. You can either come to the shows, different trade shows that we do, or you can take the out of the catalog and do it yourself. It's very easy. It's got the instructions there. It's also on the website where you can copy it off in the same instructions. These tags right here are consumer tags of each person's individual order. So what happens is the tags get put into production. I bring them up here into the cutting room and then the guys take each individual tag and cut each person's boot. So they take this tag and then they know exactly how to cut that based on what information. Exactly. Here. Incredible. Okay, so after the item is cut, it comes over to the to be split. Basically what it does is it just thins out the leather just a little bit so it can be sewn together in the proper manner. This is the skiver. This actually skives certain parts of each piece of the boot or shoe so it can be more easily sewn together. So then the boot comes over here to be stamped with the order number and the size. So Ashley has to stamp each piece with the order number and size. Okay, after the boot is cut, split, skived, and stamped, it comes over to the girls, and the girls machine stitch the upper part of the boot together. And she is stitching the quarter onto the vamp right now. They're all assembled to this point where the vamp is attached to the quarters, the cushion collar sewing on, the back stay, the eyelet facing. So it comes down to this shelf, and from this point on, this is when the boots are put on the last. So this is a mold of a, of a last that our shoes are made on. Um, we have different sizes of lasts. There are certain sizes that our boots are made on, certain sizes that our shoes are made on. Basically you take the, the generic one, if you will, and then you build it up as needed for Correct. whatever customer would need. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So once it gets to this point, the last would actually go inside here and get pulled over onto the last. This is where the boot is actually pulled over onto the last. He put it in a bucket and got the entire boot in the inner vamp wet. So he actually tacked this all the way around and it's wet so it's going to dry and it's going to form like this. What happens next is that he's gonna put on the molded sole. And he's gonna tack this all the way around. During the pullover process, the boots are put over on this rack to dry. So after the pullover department tacks up the boot onto the outer vamp, and also the molded sole, it comes over here to dry for a day. This will come back to Ron, and he will take all the tacks out. He will take this inner vamp out, so it's gonna look like this, have the molded sole sewn on, come back to Ron after the molded sole is sewn on, and have the inner vamp put back in. So the next step is where the inner vamp is sewing inside the boot and it's going to be sewn along the top up here. You have to have a heavy duty machinery to get, get through all those layers of leather. She's going to be trimming the excess inner vamp leather. Okay, right now she's trimming a piece of the gusset. In the gusset is the tongue. And now she's going to sew it in.
she's sewing the interlock, which brings the toe piece and the part of the gusset and the eyelet facing all together. After the interlock is sewn in, it goes to eyeleting, and each boot has different eyelet spacing, shoes and boots, so it depends on what style that determines how wide they're spaced apart. And if there's any speed laces or studs, those are added actually at the end. So after the last is put in, you come to the shoemaker, He's trimming off the molded sole. These are Kurt's boots that we're making for him, and they're going through the lasting process. So what happens during the lasting process is the shoemaker pulls this leather up tight so it forms onto the last so it's gonna fit your foot like a glove. So he'll pull all this leather up tack it all down, and then he's going to trim the excess leather away, and then he's going to lay the toe piece down, and it's going to be hand stitched around the entire toe. So it's going to give you a glove-like fit. They have to have very sharp tools. They have an awl, and they, they take the awl and they punch a hole, and then he puts his needles through. And this is called an overlap stitch. It's amazing the craftsmanship in, in the artwork that goes into them. The signature of the artist or the, the shoemaker is his stitch. Uh, Sue's dad, when he picks up a boot, he can look at the boot and say, this guy made it or this shoemaker made it, just by looking at how the stitch length is and how the stitch is pulled in for each individual boot. When I first got here, an old shoe came in, he called me into the office and said, here, Joe, here's one that your grandpa did, you know, 40, 50 years ago, because he said, I know it's your grandpa stitched just by the way the size is and, and how, how it's pulled in. After the shoes are sewn up by the shoemaker, they come over to the sole side and the sole gets applied. So what he would do is he would put glue on this rubber liner and also on the sole. And after the glue is applied to both items, this sole is put onto the boot and it dries. And after it dries, it comes over to another rack where it is going to be trimmed and sanded. First thing that I usually do is I check for tacks because there might be a tack left in here, so I always check for tacks. And so we just take a trimmer and we're going to trim the midsole just to get rid of the burrs. I'll also um, take the Dremel tool and clean up the sole. Just want to further clean it up, so we just take this, clean it up a little bit better. And then depending on the leather, there's different kinds of conditioner that we put on it. What we do after this is we're gonna run it back on the brusher, brushing wheel again, and then that'll give us our finished up uh, product that's you know polished up and nice. We put our you know shoelaces on them and then we put them in the boxes and wrap them up. Russell Moccasin's been in, in Berlin, Wisconsin for 114 years for a reason. It's the people, it's the environment, it's, it's everything that you would want is right here. It's a small town company that I, at times I would not think would fit anywhere else because of the craftsmen, the heritage of, the, of our workers that have been here through the years just by the long terms that they've stayed and the ability to, to work with their hands. As we said before, they're, they're artists. These people care in what they produce and how they produce it.
We've made shoes for kings, presidents, movie stars, uh, athletes all over the world. It amazes them what we can do and produce here in this little town in Berlin, Wisconsin.